But first, you don't tamper with history. Be mindful of it. This was a real turning point in India's freedom movement. Khuni Vasakhi um, is a remarkable chronological account of what was happening in Amritsar in the first fortnight of April 1919. Uh, and, and there's a beautiful passage about uh, uh, the spirit of Hindu-Muslim unity in Amritsar in 1919, that Hindus and Muslims were drinking from the same glass of water. I, I, think, I, I think India stands at the cusp of regaining its greatness. Remember your past, because if you lose your history, you will be poorer. Those 1000 videos that you see on WhatsApp every day will give you some information, fake or real. Yeah. It's not knowledge. knowledge. Knowledge will come by reading and digesting and reflecting. Do help me complete this mission of mine. Nanak Singh beseeches, O oh my Divine Guru. Sir, reeling back to the sensitivity of the place, now when you're here, you visit, what is that you think has gone uh, in the purpose of getting people to remember this place, come and know about it? Have they lost the whole sensitivity or the purpose of the place? Because somewhere in the article that you wrote, I could feel the pain and the hurt. The pain of that day and the pain of today. Well, um, I wrote that piece after visiting Jallianwala Bagh, after it had been... Uh, um, beautified for the commemorating the centenary uh, and um, I had um, two principal objections to the way it had been done and I did say yes Jallianwala Bagh needed better tourist facilities better toilets better explanation centers and museum store and all that but first you don't tamper with history be mindful of it don't put the murals of happy people coming as if they were coming to celebrate Visakhi. Because as my grandfather said, it was Khuni Visakhi. Yeah. The town was in a very sullen mood. Uh, they, they, there was uh, a curfew imposed. Um, so as soon as you enter the very site that you see, along with the patriotic music playing, to me is off key completely. Secondly, for the ease of visitors in this modernization, you've created a huge big exit. But there was no exit. The whole, the whole massacre went so gruesome because there was no exit. And, and, and so instead of getting into the polemics with anyone, when I wrote that piece, I simply quoted verses from my grandfather's poem, which had been written a hundred years ago, because this was as he saw it then. So you don't have to argue with that. And this is not a place where you need selfie spots and you don't need, uh, you know. Um, so uh, I, I just felt very strongly that there are some places that are sacred to our memory, to our consciousness. Yes. This is one of those. This was a real turning point in India's freedom movement. Yes. This was the point after which the British lost the legitimacy to rule India. This was the time when Mahatma Gandhi who until then was a British loyalist, became a steadfast nationalist. Rabindranath Tagore renounced his knighthood because of this. That is the profound significance of this place where you are sitting. After this, it was downhill for the Brits. Even while they were contemplating their imperial capital in New Delhi, the decline had begun. So I just feel that when you try and do something in these places, be mindful of the consciousness of that place uh, and, and, and don't tamper with historical architecture. This place was a killing field because there was no exit. There is now. You can't do that. You shouldn't. It's like uh, playing with people's emotion to get 
then emotional it's playing fast and loose with your own history not emotions alone it's your own history this isn't that long ago so now with uh, before we lose this whole moment that i've gathered with your talks i want to i thought i'll do this in the end but i want to hear a piece from the uh, khuni besakhi if you don't mind khuni besakhi um is a remarkable chronological account of what was happening in amritsar in the first fortnight of april 1919 it reminds us that on the 30th of march mahatma gandhi gave a call for satyagraha on the 6th of april in response to mahatma gandhi's call there was a hartal throughout the country in many cities including in amritsar and the poem captures the mood of the city when it is on hartal on strike april 9 is ram navmi and ram navmi is celebrated in a remarkable way by both the hindu and the muslim communities uh, yes. and and there's a beautiful yes. passage about uh, uh, the spirit of hindu muslim unity in amritsar in 1919 the british are so spooked by that sense of unity uh and and subsequently the deputy commissioner of amritsar miles irving at that time says in the hunter inquiry commission that he thought it was something sinister yes that hindus and muslims were drinking from the same glass of water uh and in response they arrest the two principal leaders of amritsar which were a muslim and a hindu dr satyapal dr sefuddin mm-hmm. kishlu and they are picked yeah, up on the morning of yeah. the 10th and taken away to dharamsala there's a protest and there's a amazing sequence about the protest and the firing that happens on the right. people on the 10th of april the then the fury of the crowd that had gone to protest and they come and ransack the town and uh, uh, and 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 then curfew is imposed on the 11th and that's when dire is brought in but i'm going to take you directly to the portion on 13th of April when Dyer comes in and the firing happens i read a first couple of lines in punjabi okay. from the original and then the english translation theek waqt sade 5 baje da si lok jama hoye kai hazar pyare leader desh da dukh farolne nu lecture den de san varo var pyare kende jeevna asan da hoya okha kithe jaye ke kariye pukar pyare 5:30 sharp the clock had struck thousands gathered in the bag my friends leaders came to lament the nation's woes taking turns to speak out loud my friends worst grievance hardship anger sorrow saying no one listens to us my friends what can we do what options left can't see any ray of light my friends those words for long they barely voiced came soldiers thundering down my friends at dyer's command those gurkha troops gathered in a formation tight my friends under tyrant's order they opened fire straight into innocent hearts my friends and fire and fire and fire they did some thousands of bullets were shot my friends like searing hail they felled our youth a tempest not seen before my friends riddled chests and bodies slid to the ground each one a target large my friends haunting cries for help did rend the sky smoke rose from smoldering guns my friends just a sip of water was all they sought valiant youth lay dying in the dust my friends that narrow lane to enter the bag sealed off on dyer's command my friends no exit no escape no way out was left making bag a deathly trap my friends a fortunate few somehow survived while most died then and there my friends some ran with bullets ripping their chest tumbling to their painful end my friends others caught the bullet while running away 
dropping lifeless in awkward heaps, my friends. In minutes, the bog so strewn with corpses, none knew just who was who, my friends. Many of them did look like Sikhs, amid Hindus and Muslims plenty, my friends. In prime of their youth, our brave hearts lay, gasping for one last breath, my friends. Long hair lay matted in blood and grime, in slumber deep they sleep, my friends. Says Nanak Singh, who knows their state, but God, the one and only, my friends. I think after you listen to this, you can very much, then I understand the whole purpose that you're saying that there's no point commemorating by destroying the truth. It doesn't make sense. So bringing you back to the G20 movement, we are here celebrating the G20 University Connect. As a former diplomat, I know it takes a lot to come out of that thought. I'm just pulling you out with uh, now bringing the diplomat back. As an ambassador, you have played a very important role for India in making our relations more smooth. Where do you think do we stand today to understand where is India today in the geopolitical space? Because we say that with the Prime Minister Modi also, we have kind of rediscovered, re-imaged ourselves, branded ourselves. Those are the kind of words used. How I, I, think, I, I think India stands at the cusp of regaining its greatness. Um, we are in a sweet spot. There's India's economic growth. There's a strong and stable government. There's a coherence of policy. There's also the China factor, which means that because of the egregious manner in which China has acted, countries from United States to Japan to Australia yeah. are seeking India's friendship uh, because uh, uh, they see India as the one credible player in this part of the world as part of an Indo-Pacific strategy to at least check the Chinese uh, aggressions that you are seeing uh, in multiple geographies. We are familiar with what's happening in Ladakh to us um, or what they have started to say in Arunachal. But something similar is happening with Japan, it's happening with Vietnam, it's happening with Philippines, it's happened with uh, uh, Hong Kong, it's happening with Taiwan. So you can see elements of that aggression uh, manifest uh, around. And I think um, what that has done is put India in this space where we are the most sought after uh, country. Um, does that mean India's rise is inevitable? Does it mean it's inexorable? I would simply urge a moment of caution because these things are not guaranteed. History is full of examples of countries making it to a certain takeoff stage and then not taking oh, no. off. You see, Argentina has been on the takeoff stage for the last 100 years. We thought we were going to be on takeoff stage when Rajiv Gandhi yes. um, was Prime Minister until the Beaufort scandal hit us. We thought with Prime Minister Vajpayee, we were on that stage with the economy growing at 8% and India shining, as you remember. <clears throat> it didn't yes, happen. The India shining campaign. It didn't, it didn't happen, right? We are very well placed. There's a confluence of stars in our favor. But we will still need to work relentlessly. To maintain that sweet spot? To achieve the destiny that we seek. Do so you think even we are, we are yet to work hard to be there? But again, as you said, we have to be cautioned. Do you see India really have the elements to actually achieve the targets economically, number-wise, if we say, with our youth being, we have a strength of youth population, but not so skilled, not so employed, or not so guided? Exactly. And, and, and I, I think that that is the crucial challenge really for us. And you've hit the nail on the head because it is our... Economic growth will be sustainable and well distributed only if we are able to scale our youth, only if we are able to take advantage of the opportunities that present in an era where technologies are changing very rapidly yes, very and funny. yesterday's skills may no longer be valid for tomorrow. So I think if we are able to do that, to me, that is the single biggest challenge in front of India today. The second challenge is for us to maintain our internal cohesion. 
countries cannot go, grow strong if there are fissures within. And I think we have to be very mindful of, uh, uh, of that, that internal cohesion is crucial to external strength. So there, are you hinting <coughs> on the political conflicts that we have or the yeah. diversity in the political... Uh, well, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to uh, uh, go beyond that. But just to say that I think India would be stronger if it is united, if all communities are carried along with the national narrative. If some communities start feeling, and a lot of this is question of perception, if they start feeling it left out by, yeah. or left behind, uh, then it undermines the cohesion of the country. And again, India's history is replete with those examples. Sir, coming to you, you have been a Punjabi boy, Punjabi man, who's traveled the world. So, what it took for you, because Punjabis ke liye to bolte na, but khule man ke, khule dil ke hote hain, jo hai bolte te hain. So, being a diplomat, as the word also goes, was it difficult for you to hold on to yourself, change yourself to become a person who you're not? Or you've become something you don't relate to anymore as your... No, I think, I, I think uh, the interesting thing about Indians is that we are all comfortable with multiple identities which we can carry off simultaneously. Which is a multiple so, identity disorder or a... No, I think it's a great asset that we have. I mean, depending on time and space, I can be Punjabi, I can be Sikh, I can be Indian, I can be international, right? Um, there are no contradictions amongst them. So, where I have a diplomatic role to play, I'm obviously extremely careful about every word that I speak or write. But if I'm in this company of five friends, yeah. I can be back to myself. Um, so you were able to transit between those identities. I think all of us do. Yeah. No, that is true. I'm sure you do in your uh, no, between your professional and personal career. I'm able to relate to it when you say yeah. that. But yeah, all you have said is very, very. I think briefly you've brought everything together, giving us a little bit of opening into your heart through Jaliawala Bagh's story, which is very personal, with your grandfather, your narrative, and then bringing us back to the global picture. Ek message Punjabi me, agar ab youth ko dena chahe, because your, your thoughts are very practical. You've spoken about technology, <coughs> country, whatever we need, trade, where, wherever we have been and where we are lacking. Aaj ke youth ko aapka message kya hoga, kyunki aaj ke mudde ko chaur hai. Grow to karna hai, geopolitical space hai, to hum intellectual baate kar rahe hai. But jin ko hum pohachna chahate hai, un sab ke mudde hi ko chaur hai. So how do you want to bring them together? To understand ki your world is not limited to you. I think I will just say two things. One is, remember your past. Because if you lose your history, you will be poorer. Um, make that effort to learn about places like these and what they symbolize. What are the sacrifices of that generation which gave up so much so that we could be free? Don't take it for granted. And second, you are living in a world that is changing faster than it has ever changed before. What used to happen in a generation is happening in a couple of years. Um, and, and, and so, it's not going to be easy. Skill, education, learn, distinguish between information and knowledge. Those 1000 videos that you see on WhatsApp every day <laughs> will give you some information, fake or real. Yeah. It's not knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge will come by reading and digesting and reflecting. Remember that. Thank you so much, sir. I thought that you had a Punjabi. You had a line in your book, but you had a line in Punjabi. You had a line in your book. That's our ritual. No, I had a line in your book. You had to run the audience. 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 So, I had to run the audience. So, I had to run the audience. पहला पन्ना है जिसकी मैंने बात की थी मैं उसको पंजाबी में पढ़ देता हूँ क्योंकि उससे एक लोगों को याद रहेगा कि हम क्या किस चीज की बात कर रहे हैं जैसे मैंने कहा था कि ये पोएम है पहला पन्ना इट्स अ प्रेयर एड्रेस टू गुरु गोविंद सिंह गुरु गोविंद सिंह यूज्ड टू बी अ कलगी सो इट सेज कलगी वालड़े शहनशाह पिता मेरे चरना तेरिया ते नमस्कार सतगुरु तू है पुष्ट पुनः निमाणिया दा दीन बंधु तू विच संसार सतगुरु बड़ी पाप दे नाल भरपूर होके पई डोल दीए मंजतार सतगुरु करके मेहर इस डुबदी जामदी नु 
ਤੱਕਾ ਮਾਰ ਕੇ ਲਾਵਣਾ ਪਾਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਪਰ ਕੇ ਪ੍ਰੇਮ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਚਾ ਦੇ ਪਿਆਲਾ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਪੀਂਦਿਆਂ ਚੜੇ ਖੁਮਾਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਚਲੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਰੂਰ ਮਸਰੂਰ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਕਲਮਦਾਸ ਦੀ ਤੇਜ਼ ਰਫ਼ਤਾਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਦੱਸੇ ਹਾਲ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਬੇਦੋਸ਼ੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਦੇਸ਼ ਪਰ ਹੋਏ ਨਿਸਾਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਫੋਟੋ ਖਿੱਚ ਕੇ ਵਿਛੜੇ ਸਜਣਾ ਦਾ ਰੱਖ ਦਿਆਂ ਮੈਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਸੰਸਾਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਯਾਦ ਫੇਰ ਕਰਾ ਦਿਆਂ ਹਿੰਦ ਤਾਈ ਮਤਾ ਦੇਸ਼ ਨਾ ਦਿਲੋਂ ਵਿਸਾਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਦਾਸਤਾਨ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਦੀ ਲਿਖਣੇ ਨੂੰ ਦਾਸ ਆਪ ਦਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਤਿਆਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਤੋੜ ਚਾਰਨਾ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਿਹਰ ਕਰਕੇ ਨਾਨਕ ਸਿੰਘ ਇਹ ਕਰੇ ਪੁਕਾਰ ਸਤਿਗੁਰ ਵੈਸੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਗੁੱਡ ਫੀਲ ਵਾਟ ਹੀ ਵਾਸ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਆ ਕੂਡ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਥੈਟ ਹੀ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਵਿਥ 올 ਮਾਈ ਹਾਰਟ ਵਿਥ 올 ਯੂ ਗਿਵ ਮੀ ਦ ਸਟ੍ਰੈਂਥ ਟੂ ਰਾਈਟ ਦ ਟਰੂਥ ਵਾਟ ਹੀ ਆਈ ਰੀਡ ਦ ਲਾਸਟ 6 ਲਾਈਨਸ ਫॉर ਯੋਰ ਵਿਊਅਰਸ to pen a portrait of those departed ones grant me the strength my divine guru to remind my people across india lest we forget their sacrifice my divine guru to write the saga of our heroes such your disciple is ready my divine guru do help me complete this mission of mine nanak singh beseeches o oh my divine guru thank you thank you so much thank you so much for mr suri for giving your time and sharing a part of your heart thank you very much thank you.